We got three things for you today that you're not going to want to miss. Three pieces of wisdom. Or as a friend of mine used to say, Brian, I got three things for you that you need. <laughs> it would make me laugh every time. Okay, so it all has to do with those of us who feel inadequate. Okay? Now, at some point in life, most peop people struggle with inadequacy. You know, you've been battling this quite a bit. Yes, I have been. She talked about a lot on the air. Here's the question everybody wants to know. Has Dave Safransky ever felt inadequate? Uh, but he needs yeah. to get. You need to get close. It's, yeah, it's a moment here. of transparency. Do you need some tissue here? Give us some tissue. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have you. had uh, times here. in my life. Let it out. Just let it out. Where? <laughs> <laughs> <I> just <laughs> didn't think I was good enough. Or no, but 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 seriously. Yes. Yeah. And so specifically, in, in what areas have you dealt with feelings of inadequacy? Yeah, you know, sometimes when you, if you go to a big meeting or something, or, or even something as simple as teaching Sunday school, uh -huh. and you know that in your audience are the icons of the Bible, right? I mean, right. these people, they were, they will pull over at a rest stop and read Jonah just because they felt compelled to. And I'm preparing the night before. And uh, so it, I think there's situations in everybody's life where they're going to be thrust into, where they're like... Eh, Am I the right person for this? So even still today, you'll you'll go to a meeting and you might you'll be like, I don't know if I'm, yeah, if I've got what it takes for this. Sometimes, yeah. Wow, Dave's a friend. So how do you handle it? You still move forward, obviously, you still do yeah. it. How do you navigate those feelings? Uh, in in basic training. Because you walk around like you got it together. I, I own the place. I walk around. Thank like I own the place. you. So um, please. But that's on purpose. Well, I, I think it's uh, I learned in basic training. A drill sergeant once told me, do something. Even if it's wrong, <laughs> do it with gusto. Yeah, I suppose, right? and so I have. Interesting. For, for better or for worse, I have kind of adopted that as one of my life mottos. Um, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to do it with confidence because if if I'm prepared and I've taken care of the things that I can take care of, which are usually uh, knowing the content, being wise in what I'm talking about, schooling up myself on the subject matter, I can't control anything else, and I was. I was actually driving on 480 one time. I was headed west. I was right under the 176 overpass. And God released me from trying to be a controlling person. I was a very controlling person earlier in my life. And I think that's where a lot of my inadequacy came from, my feelings of inadequacy. Because if I couldn't control everything in the situation, I felt like it was out of control. Oh. And I had been praying for years and years for God to release me from that. And at that moment in my life, Brian, I, I felt like I got a word from God driving that I was released. And ever since then, I have been truly released from it. So, and someone needs that today. And I, I'm anxious to get your, if you have time for this, Dave has to catch a flight, you know. Oh Me too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> well, but he does really have a flight to catch. Janelle has been battling inadequacy. Give us, like, the cliff notes of your of your dealing with inadequacy. And then we got to get, she got three nuggets of wisdom. So... Yeah, so for the last, I've struggled, at, you just like hit it on the nose. It's that feeling of you want to control, you want to control things. When life is simple and you're in college and, you know, you can kind of fool yourself and feel yes. like then you have kids <laughs> that, you know, and, and life gets more complicated. And so the last couple years with the children in the home and, new job. and now new job, like before it was like, okay, I homeschool, I'm home. And so even in, though I felt inadequate for years, okay, it's more simple. Like I have to get better as a homeschool mom. Now it's like, okay, now you homeschool and now there's ministry and there's your marriage. And so it's gotten to the point where last weekend, wrestling with the Lord, I, I just said, you know what, let me, I know there's been people that have been called to things. Because the question of, am I called to these things? That's a yes. It's like, I can't do these. So I look back and I looked at people like Moses, mm -hmm. like Gideon, who were, felt inadequate in what they did. And what I, what the common thread was God's response. He would specifically say, I'm going with you. Right. And so that's where it was like a game changer at that moment for me because I was like, that's what I've been doing. I felt like he's given me an assignment and, and said go. And then yesterday. Yesterday. I un, It wasn't supposed to be connected, but it was because God works like that. I spent a couple of like a couple of hours with an 80 old 80 year old friend 
-hmm. so refreshing so refreshing starting with she had lunch for me laid out Aww. and she texted me and said I know you haven't eaten because of the station whatever and she just heard me and let me kind of pour my heart out and then she I walked away with three nuggets that I was like what like I needed to hear this but I know there are other people that need this and so the first one was she said when you feel inadequate reread your story validate your story and she said everything you've told me she went all the way back to how did I get to this country and all she she had me tell her my story she said all of that the Lord used for this moment mm -hmm. she said you have in you what you need for what the Lord's putting in front of you right now and he knew what he would put in front of you like way before that so it was intentional and we talk about the Lord's sovereignty and we don't like in moments like this you forget it's not a, it's not by mistake or a surprise yeah right. you were and homeschooling and a home, stay-at-home mom and you got your engineering degree and you lived in Rhode Island all that for a purpose to get you to this point to this because moment. he knew you would need all this for this point and so I know a lot of us struggle with like comparing and feeling like oh I can't do it like such and such and she told me don't look at other people because they're not equipped the way you are and the Lord knows this they don't have your story, your experiences. So that was that was amazing for me. Number two, she said, change your perspective on the ideal. I know for women, the ideal a lot of the times is the Proverbs 31 woman. And she was like, you know, she had it together, right? Outside the home, in the home, her husband, her kids. But then she was like, do you realize that most of these qualities weren't manifested all in one season? Mm -hmm. She's like, you got to backtrack and realize it's over a lifetime so there will be seasons in your life where some areas just won't look like that ideal they just won't some areas will be stronger and and then the final one i know you probably don't struggle with this she said with time man maybe you do or you have in the past but with time management part of my struggle and my inadequacy is am i giving my kids enough time by giving my husband enough time. Then you're nailing your husband. You're like, yeah, we're spending enough time. And then in the back of your head, you're like, oh, but that means I'm not with my kids enough time. And, they, and it's so limited. Spending enough time with your clients. or you Nobody can waste time like me. I am what? an expert time waster. I really have to fight this. You feel guilty about it? Uh, yeah, sometimes I do because I know that there's really good things that I could be doing. And a lot, I have a lot to do. And so when I... When I take my time and I burn it in a way that is not productive, I think, oh my gosh, why did I do that? And so, yeah, that's something that I work on frequently is, is managing my time effectively. Wow. Because one thing we all have the exact same amount of this time. We have 24 hours a day, 168 hours in a week. How you use that is going to really determine which way you're going. And so we have to use our time wisely. Yeah. And so this 80-year-old saint said the same thing. That you yeah, I, I love yeah. it. I love it. And and about comparing myself, I, I made a change in my life where I used to compare myself to people because that's what we do. Well, that guy's got more toys or this or that. Or, and then I, I, re, I realized I have to compare myself only to a previous version of myself. And am I doing things better now than I was doing then? And, I, and so... If you're going to compare yourself against other people, you're always, always going to be disappointed. One, you don't know what they had to do to get to where they're at. Mm -hmm. You might not want to pay that price. And secondly, uh, a lot of things that I've seen over time is that it's kind of a, a, a charade. It, it's a false front in a lot of ways. So when you, when you see into somebody's life that you've admired for a long time, you're like, wow. That is really disappointing. <laughs> what I just saw. <laughs> it's, oh, that's true, though. Yeah. It is very true. It is very true. I, I remember one time I went. There, this very rich person lived in a very big house, and they wanted to see me. And I drive to their house, and they're showing me their artwork and their fur closet and all these things. And we sit down, and he said, "The reason you're here is because we can't pay our bills." And like the wind just left my sail right there. I'm like. I can't compare myself against these people. I have no idea where they're at. Yeah. And so I have to compare myself against me. Am I doing things better now? But when I when I was on 480 and I got released from that, Janelle, it took so long for me to get there. It took, it took me probably 12 years of praying to get there. And why God didn't do it right away? I, I always ask God this. 
Why did you wait so long? Yeah. Why couldn't you just yeah. say, boom, it's done, it's over? Because, and, and the answer is, I would not have appreciated it. Oh, yeah. Right? When I get things, it's, it's human nature. If somebody says, hey, I'm going to give you all this stuff, we tend not to take care of it. And I had to earn it. And maybe that's where God is with you right now, that he's going to put you there, keep asking for it, and when he releases you, it's going to be, and you will know it. It is going to be like you got hit with a cold shower. And that's how it felt for me. I knew at that moment that God had released me from it. Yeah. Now, yeah. there's somebody very close to me in my life that says, well, maybe he went too far. Because <laughs> there are some things you used to be concerned about that I'd like you to be concerned about. I'm like, no, can't go there. I'm an all or nothing guy. Oh, yeah. So, for instance, I used to smoke. When I was in the Army, I smoked. That, kind of a closet smoker. And I hated it because I was also in the fitness. And so when I quit, uh, I quit, and it was very difficult to quit. Don't ever start smoking. The best way to quit oh, smoking yeah. is to never start. Yeah. And I was at a wedding so one time, and somebody handed me a cigar. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll have a cigar. Put me right back there. I, I, cannot, I cannot be around tobacco. I cannot do tobacco. Or, so it's either all or nothing yeah. for me. And so I'm either going to be a worry ward and a controlling person, or I'm not going to be. Yeah. And now it's my choice because God... God released me from it, so now I would have to make a choice to go back there. And every once in a while, I get a twinge. Like, oh, and I have to think, I can't go there. Can't do it. Yeah. And By I love way, that you... Oh, go ahead. Hey, Mike, Debbie, Betty, Callie, Mario. Um, and he said, hola, excelente programa. Hey. And someone said... means excellent said, program in Spanish, Jeff obviously. says he wants a, Dave, a Brian and Dave show. He said it would be awesome. Yeah, Half hour out. to an hour of financial <laughs> advice and witty banter. Emphasis on the witty banter. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah. but weren't you impressed with my Spanish, by the way? I was. And you said I like love when Spanish words are basically English words with an extra letter at the end. <laughs> yeah, yes. basically. So uh, with that in mind, you had the third piece of wisdom that he's going to appreciate from this saint. She's amazing. an eight-year-old woman. Yeah. And it has to do with what you talked about. We only have so much time. Mm -hmm. and, and we spend so much time worried about what we're doing with our time, what we should be doing. Da, da, da. Did I give enough? We feel guilty then afterwards yeah. that we wasted yes. the time. Well, and it came from, for me, as a, it can be or feels extreme because my kids are home all day long. So it's hard to put boundaries on, okay, they, they come home at five. So you get from five to eight, yeah. then you go to bed. So I... I, I feel like I should be available all the time. But then it's kids or it's the ministry. Am I doing enough? Am I spending enough time with my kids? And so she said, you know, if, imagine if somebody broke into your home and took from you the greatest thing, like what's most precious to you. She said, picture it. Your golf clubs, exactly. <laughs> so she was like, okay, good. So picture that. She said, in your life, your most precious thing that somebody can take from you is your time. Mm -hmm. She said it's so limited, and there's only but so much you'll have. And when they take it from you, they can never give it back to you. And then she said, Jesus, uh, the reason our faith is what it is is because he gave his life. His life was not taken from him. He sa she said, do that with your time. Yes. Don't let people take time away from you. Give it. Be generous with it, but give it with intention. And then she said, picture your time like golden apples there's only but so many and they're golden and she said and use your time as blocks and determine like look at the list of things and people you want to give your time to these golden apples and then she said and then you allocate them but the key is she said when you give it give it 100 percent. so yeah. if you're going to give two hours to your kids tonight turn your phone off don't read like be with them and then when that block is over, it is over. You can go on hour. a walk you by yourself. Two. How about just an hour? <laughs> and I know. But I she like said, this lady. I want to have lunch. What amazing? did she serve you for lunch? Was it something I It was lunch? a hot br a l sandwich. It was like a it was. Yeah, I want to have. I want to have lunch with her. And what's your but, name? <laughs> but she Isn't said, yeah. when it's over, because you gave it one hundred percent with mm -hmm. intention, you don't have to feel guilty. Like in my case, to tell the kids, go downstairs, I'm not available, leave me alone. Watch Netflix. She was like, be free. It frees you. So one thing I do in business is I have... Netflix, shut up. On my calendar... <laughs> I have to do Netflix. I have red time, green time, and yellow time. And the red time is, I'm working. 
And if you call me in during red time, I'm not taking your call. So is this on your calendar? Oh, nice. Well, my or staff knows when it is. They okay. know. I put my phone on do not disturb. And I'm not taking calls in. And if you call on my cell phone, I'm sending you to voicemail because I'm working. I'm doing something. Uh -huh. And then I have green time when I'm, I'm more than willing to give that to people. I'll meet with people. I'll talk with people. And then there's yellow time, which is a little bit fungible. And I could do either. But if I have something special going on, uh, like today I'm traveling, uh, I, 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 may I may take it. I may not. But in that red time, it's totally devoted to what I'm devoting it to. And this is how I've managed my time over the years to, to get the things done. Because what I do is a huge responsibility. Yeah. I, I have people's wealth, right? And right. They're, they're either going to retire or fund a college kid on this. And so I take the responsibility very, very seriously. And I have to show up when it's time to show up. I have to do what I say I'm going to do. And so I cannot be wasting my time with silly things. And but now, but, but Dave, to, to be pragmatic here, I mean, this isn't just something in your head, right? You're actually telling your staff this yes. language. Yes. Red time, yellow time, green time. Everybody knows what it is. Yes. Do they use that with you then or not? They Well, they sometimes they'll come in and bother me, but... Well, but what, what I'm saying is, is that a culture of the office? Like somebody can say, I'm in my red time right now. Well, they can't because I'm the boss. <laughs> I knew you were going to say Their that. red time is what I you say it's it. their red time. But, but I mean, it's it's your adaptation of these golden apples. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you when you are allowed to be in my space and I'm going to be giving. But there's mm -hmm. times when you can't have my apple. You can't have it. That's them. right. Cannot have it. And it's red. And for, I like that. For Janelle and for her family, it may be, be because the, the um, probably the, the mistake that people will make is that when everybody's home all the time, it's all time. Yeah. Right? So to bring a little structure, so there's there's a, a structure that could be brought there that would be, it, it doesn't have to be like mm -hmm. basic training was for me, but something where there's a little bit of structure there that, uh, that structure helps everybody. It does. Way. It really yeah. does. So by bringing a little structure to that day might relieve you of some of the the feelings of inadequacy because well we we work the schedule this is the schedule we have and maybe Monday Wednesday Friday it's a schedule of certain and then Tuesday Thursday is a little bit different schedule but maybe it'll free you up a little bit yeah because even on the off times as a mom I'm like I should play uh, board games with them or I should read to the baby no, or see. do you see what I'm saying or if I want to go on a walk by myself to hear a book yeah I'll be like oh that's messed up like, no I should do you see what I'm saying I, it's that I do. feeling and because to me, the, this is one of the major obstacles. Is a lot of Christians think they're not allowed to have fun for themselves. Mm. That they're sinning when they do that. And you, you know what book sets me free on this. i got to get my favorite quotes. I'll find them faster. Ecclesiastes sets people free on this. He has a book of quotes. I've got my Bible resources binder so I can find stuff faster if I need to. Um, Ecclesiastes 9.7. So go ahead, eat your food with joy and drink wine with a happy heart, for God approves of this. How much more clear do you need about, do you want to go eat a nice meal? God approves of this. Yeah. He's like saying to you, go and do this. It's good. Um, there's other ones too. There's, uh, of course, now I can't find it in my, here we go. Ecclesiastes 8.15. So I recommend having fun because there's nothing better for people in this world than to eat, drink, and enjoy life. Do you need to be set free? Christians can have fun. Yeah. And when you give your apple, in my mind, to your to whatever the situation is, your wife, your kids, your job, 100%, and you do it for that, that time, go ahead. Have fun now. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Don't you think Christians feel guilty about having fun for themselves? I think that... I don't have trouble. You don't have trouble. But you do. Yeah. Why but can't you go out for a while? Themselves. What? Why can't you go have fun? Listen to a book. That's fun. Listen to a book I and go on a do it. I do it. But you feel guilty it's when you exactly. do it. Exactly. It's the, I should be available. I should check in with the kids and make sure, if, you know. But For you God know the approves key, of this. The key with what she yeah. said was, and which I need, I've been bad at, when I am there, I'm distracted mm -hmm. or I'm weary and tired. And then she said, if you switch it up and when you're there, be there 100%. Right. It makes it easier to say, when I'm not there, I'm okay because I gave you my 100%. I had a boss one time that you go to his office, he'd want to talk to you, and the whole time you're talking, he's fiddling around with his computer and doing oh, brutal. anything else except for looking at you. Yeah. And
and, uh, and every once in a while, I throw in a sentence that made no sense whatsoever, just to see if he was paying attention. <laughs> he never heard one of them. So I can't tell you what the sentence I threw in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally appropriate, but uh, but it's so easy to get distracted now, whether it's a phone or an iPad yeah. or Netflix or the news or whatever. And I, I think, for one thing, I would not have known that you deal with, with feelings yeah. of inadequacy. Knowing you from this setting, yeah. it would have never it's never occurred to me. Everybody tells me that. So my friend is like, I don't get that. But we get good at hiding things. We do. We get really good at hiding things. Yeah. And we get good at faking it, but that's one of the walls we try to tear down around here. Yeah. So Janelle, Ecclesiastes three, twelve and thirteen, but twelve says, So I concluded there's nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. Yeah. And you know, in, in Ecclesiastes, he yeah, says, when right. a tree falls to the east or it falls to the west, there it falls and there it lies, which means there's nothing you could do, right? It's going to fall where it falls. That's the. I read that. I knew that. I still tried to control which way the tree was falling for most of my life. And until God released me from it, I was still trying to control it. So it's more than, I could read all that. I know that. I know that it says you should watch your language. Sometimes I don't. I know these things, so it's it's more of God had to release me from it personally. I could read it all day long, but I was still going to go try and control what everybody was doing, yeah. like a little puppet master. Mm -hmm. And until God in my car, He speaks to me in my car a lot because I used to. I, I've always, I've never lived close to the office, and so it wasn't the only time God has spoken to me. I felt directly in my car, but that's when He released me, and that's what that's what has to happen for people. They have to be released. So there's a bunch of nice comments coming in. Thanks, you guys. We were, we were excited about this stuff, so we were we didn't get to you so much, but um, what's some stuff we can draw out here? Betty says, yes, yeah, she regrets also wasting time. Uh, she struggles with that. You see, what is wasting time? How do you define wasting time? If you were to, let's say that you had a, a fairly strict schedule, okay? You said, well, at 8 o'clock from 9 o'clock, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to play with my kids or whatever it is and then you scheduled some time as discretionary you could do whatever you want with it it's yours to decide if that's to go on Facebook I consider Facebook to be a total waste of time yeah. and they're trying to steal your mind and your kids but I still and your use baby. And, and your dog <laughs> yeah, and your dog yeah but the Brazilians that we work with in in the Amazon are all on Facebook so I kind of stay in touch with them there but sometimes it'll be like oh an hour went by Oh, yeah. For me, that's a waste of time. But it might not be for you because you've scheduled that as discretionary time and you could do whatever you want with it. But bring a little structure to it and then maybe you won't see it as a waste of time. But that's why the golden apple analogy does make sense. Mm -hmm. Stop letting people and things take your time. Yeah. Be intentional about giving your time. So like he said, if it's Facebook, then be intentional. Yeah, so five to do, six. Give yourself 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Whatever, yeah. hour, whatever your schedule says. Yeah. yeah. You give it to yourself and then get out of there. Yeah. And do the next thing you're giving your, your time but to. But this person that you're meeting with, yeah. you, you should make a regular habit. I, not just because you, but yeah. we need people like that in our lives. And I think one of the things that's missing in church and in the world today is godly, caring mentors. Yeah. And it's not that they're not there. They are there. Yeah. We're not reaching to them. And we don't value. We don't let them know, like, we need you. We need your experience. What gave weight most of all to what she said, like, because she stopped me and said, look at me. Mm -hmm. They're golden, and you don't get them back. Yeah, she said, I'm 80. Yes! Like, I don't have many apples left, essentially, mm -hmm. is what At she that said. point, that's different to, like, a Brian telling me that. Because so I have a lot. I'm so young. <laughs> I'm so young. I've got like a tree Why did I do that? Yeah. You want an apple? Here, take one. You can have it. <laughs> i got a bunch <laughs> right over here. I'm doing nothing with them. But no, yeah. wasn't she like, we look at me. Do. Yeah. I'm 80. Yes. She knows. She has perspective. It's the thing that a lot of times younger people lack. It's not that they're stupid or yeah. they lack the perspective. They don't realize that between 40 and 80 is like that. You know, a lot is going to happen. A lot of good things are going to happen. And you can have a lot of influence in a lot of great places, but you got to you got to make it happen. We have to be intentional about these things. You you probably got the be that lady should write a book. She should. Yeah. Uh, she I should. mean, to me, 40 I'm still waiting on 41. You said 40 to 80 is like that. I mean, 
I'm still waiting on 40. It is like less than half a year. You're like, like it feels like 40 has been a long time. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. Yeah. yeah. Betty says even five minutes with your friend and mine is such a blessing. Things is it turns into hours. Yeah. Mike says reading fiction novels may be a waste of time for some. Relaxation is not a waste of time as long as it's intentional. That's what you're saying, Dave. Right. Yeah. Uh, when I when I was first in business, my wife. So my wife never misses a vacation opportunity, <laughs> right? She always wanted to go someplace. And and a pastor sat me down. And he said, David, do not think about getting back to work when you're on vacation. Think about the times that you're building with your family, the the camaraderie that you're building, the love that you're building, the memories that your kids will have. And I had to, I used to get the vacation and think five days and I'm back, four days and I'm back. Oh, you yeah. love it your is. job. Then. Is that what it is? That's part of it. Yeah, wow. it's part of it. But it also, my mind, it, it was, my priorities were incorrect. Yeah. And I needed to just be with my family and honor my wife for having taken the time to plan the vacation because I didn't do anything. Sometimes we'd go to the airport and I'd be like, where are we going? <laughs> so, oh. I'm not kidding. Wow. So I had to change that. And uh, yeah. You, you plan those times, you take those times, you invest in those times because pretty soon they're gone. Yeah. But hey, Dave has to catch a flight. <laughs> we got not going to hold that private jet forever, bro. <laughs> we got to, I don't know, check email or something. We go on Facebook. <laughs> <You're important too. laughs> we got to go thumb through Facebook. But thanks for joining us, family. You can like and share this if somebody in your life needs to see it. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow for Follow Up Friday. Hasta luego. Oh, yeah, I got it. Stop. Oh my goodness. Who left?